Hi everyone. I've got some family stuff going on this week, so we're going to have to go back to the rough cut. But I'll try and have a real edited video for you guys next week. This week, though, we are still in 2 Chronicles 7.14, and we are still talking about the things that God has called us to do to seek revival. We, who are called by his name, will humble ourselves, pray, and now seek God's face. This puts us right in the middle of a great metaphor that can't and probably shouldn't be completely understood. What does it mean to seek God's face? And God the Father is spirit. He doesn't have a face. And yet, the face of God is a phrase that is commonly used in Scripture. In the Old Testament, if God turned his face towards you or made his face to shine upon you, that was pretty much synonymous with blessing. To be cursed, on the other hand, was to have God turn his face away from you. In the New Testament, we're reminded that we see the face of God, the image of the invisible God, in Jesus, in the Christ. John, in 1 John, even reminds us to look for the face of God by loving each other. Look for it in each other. Yet, even more, we have this promise that Though now we see darkly, someday we will see God face to face. And I think in that verse we get the sense that it's a real, it's a real face-to-face -face relationship with God the Father in heaven. There's so many verses and realities behind these verses that play into this idea of seeing God. And I hope that we're able to discuss all of them or a lot of them in the comments below. But there is one element to this metaphor that I want to talk about a little bit more in this video. And that's the dichotomy between God calling us to seek his face and the reality that in the ancient world, people believed God to be so holy, so removed, that if they saw his face, they would die. You get evidence of this in stories like the story of Jacob and Isaiah, among other places. In the story of Moses, God even tells him that if you look at my face in all its glory, that experience would kill you. And yet Moses and Jacob and Isaiah are all described as having seen God. Is there a sense in which the call to seek God's face is a call to come and die? I think it's easy for people reading this from a New Testament perspective to say, yeah, I've been crucified with Christ. The call to Christ is obviously a call to die. And I do think that there may be something prophetic about this that is pointing to Jesus. However, there is something more directly applicable for the people who first heard this. People who wouldn't have thought of Jesus, who wouldn't have even understood that the Messiah was eventually going to come and die, but who might have still understood that the call to seek God's face is a call to die. So I guess we have to ask again, what does it mean to seek God's face? Well, we might start by answering the question, what is God's face? And again, not even with that can I give a complete answer, but one clue that might be um, part of the answer is that the word face is used a lot more in the Old Testament than just to talk about this thing on a person. The Bible also uses face to talk about the surface of things. It talks about the face of the waters. It talks about the whole face of the land or the whole face of the earth. Um, in all cases, the face is something that we can interact with. So the implication, I'm guessing, is that when we speak of the face of God, it may be saying that God is this vast, huge, and utterly beyond our comprehension thing, but there is part of God that we can interact with, part that we can get to know, part that we can even have a relationship with. And we're called to interact with God to the point that 
we're able, in so much as we are able, being limited finite beings. And this event, this having finite fallen human beings interact with an infinite, omnipotent, holy God, that event changes us. It changes us so much that it's like death. When Isaiah sees the face of God, he begins his public ministry as a prophet. When Jacob sees the face of God, he changes his name to Israel, and it marks a huge turning point in his life. When Moses sees the face of God, and when the people of Israel are described as seeing God's face, God gives them the law, the framework for the covenant that will define the relationship between God and his people for millennia. Again, this is not anything close to the end-all and be-all of the answer to this mystery, but it might be part. When we approach God on His terms, we cannot help but be irrevocably changed. That's the reality. So as we humble ourselves, as we pray, we must know that our ultimate goal is to see God's face and to be changed. Let's come and die and find new life in this relationship with God. So friends, let's discuss this stuff. I really want to hear what you guys think about the face of God and seeking after God's face in the Bible.